I wasn't sure about the level of knowledge among the audience, so I, I decided to make it 15 minutes only, and it will be more like a kind of a motivational speech and uh, some practical advice how to actually practice open science, because we all know theoretically, but sometimes we miss to do something that is easy to do. So I made a kind of list of very simple things that we can do for, for a start. Uh, there are many benefits of open science, and uh, this slide summarizes uh, s some of them. And uh, basically, uh, we are quite aware of it. Uh, so open science is more efficient because we don't have to wait for, for publications to be published. We can use the, the benefits of early uh, publishing of various results, data, etc. Uh, by publishing data and making everything available, there are many economic benefits because we don't have to uh, duplicate research. Uh, then collaboration is uh, enhanced when we are practicing open science. And also, uh, uh, the, the, there is this moment of social responsibility that is very important in open science uh, and innovation and responsible research uh, and uh, the awareness of uh, the role of science uh, and uh, communication with the with the general public. Then uh, and this can uh, also improve the, the trust in science. So there are many benefits. It's a very complex uh, uh, complex idea. And also, uh, open science is a very complex ecosystem because it, it involves uh, infrastructure. It, it involves a culture of research, and uh, it also involves uh, researchers and uh, research managers and and uh, policymakers who are, who are aware of the of the benefits of this ecosystem. Uh, we speak about open science in different uh, contexts. For example, among uh, senior uh, senior researchers, among older generations, uh, the typical approach is like we are discussing about traditional way of science, which is paper-based, printed, and then we have the digital environment, we have open access, and then we have, uh, uh, after the open access to publications, we have opening up of everything else. Then there is this uh, context of uh, research reproducibility, when we usually talk about open science as a way to improve science, because there is a crisis of reproducibility, there is a crisis uh, in science in general, General, the trust in science is uh, challenged, and uh, we need uh, more openness to improve this. But the, the right way, uh, and especially from the perspective of younger generations, is talking about open science as, uh, uh, as an ecosystem and also about uh, something that is inbuilt in the methodology of research. So this is not something that comes after research, and then we, we've done the research, and then we are opening retrospectively everything uh, in, the, in the process of research, it's uh, embedding the open science principles in, in the methodology of research and in research planning and then throughout the, the research life cycle. Uh, there are many challenges to open science, so it's a very attractive idea and it's, it seems very logical, but there are still many, many challenges and uh, there are many barriers to it, some of which are not really justified. So these researchers usually say that uh, they, they don't have the time Time, uh, and then they, they have to prioritize because they are not rewarded for open science practices. They would have practiced it if they had been rewarded. So this is a serious uh, problem. Then uh, also we have resistance among some research in some research circles, among some researchers, we have resistance. They don't want to accept those practices even when they are mandated. So they either uh, don't do this or they just uh, do this, do practice open science in a really sloppy way without uh, implementing all, all the best practice. Also, there is a huge resistance from commercial publishers. Uh, it's against their inter financial interest, for example, publishing preprints and uh, opening up uh, research results early on in the research process is not something that is uh, that is very good for them because they uh, make profits uh, on on the publications that come after the research is finished. Some in some areas we have uh, inadequate infrastructure. We don't have sufficiently good infrastructure to support the process. So research com the research community can be very much aware of 
uh, the benefits of open science, but if they don't have repositories and they don't have, I don't know, proper open access journals and they don't have uh, the infrastructure necessary for research data management, they, they, they wouldn't be uh, able to do this. And another serious problem is the lack of skills and training because uh, the, the number of uh, librarians are being repurposed to provide this training and they sometimes can't really manage uh, all the things, uh, all the tasks and this is a, a serious issue and also there are, uh, in many countries there are no uh, training programs, accredited training programs or uh, university training programs to support uh, the development of open science skills. As for, as for young researchers, there are additional problems and these are related to their to their position in the research ecosystem. So in many many uh, usually, they are not uh, available. They are not able to make some decisions on their own. For example, if they are advisors uh, and senior colleagues, senior colleagues don't approve of open science practices beyond what is uh, mandated, they will probably not be able to practice all of them. And also, there is a problem if uh, researchers who work uh, as parts of teams, uh, if the general general uh, uh, adoption, uptake of open science practices within the team is poor, then they will probably not be able to, to practice this. For example, they might, be able, they might wish to share the data, but if the other team members don't want to do this, they won't be able to, to practice this, although they know how to, although they want to, to open up their research. So now I will cover those, uh, those challenges and uh, say what you can still do, even if uh, your research environment is not really Really favorable for for open science or you are not in a position to make decisions or you don't have the time to apply all the good uh, open science practices uh, so there is uh, this diagram uh, this is it is quite old and it shows how to make your workflow more open and it is actually it's uh, the, the, the the foundation of this approach is uh, the understanding of open science is something in built in the methodology. So open science is practiced across the, the research workflow, uh, from the from literature search, from research planning, to uh, publication and outreach. Uh, this diagram shows what you can do. These are only some examples. There, are, there is much more that you can do. There are some examples, uh, and also there are tools that can make it possible for you. For example, I I like to mention this. Uh, uh, using shared reference libraries, uh, for example, uh, Zotero. So you are doing literature search, you are at the beginning of your research uh, and you don't have any results, but you can still create a public Zotero library and share it with your colleagues. These are just references and perhaps somebody may draw your attention to some references that you're missing. You may uh, have, you may create shared resources with your colleagues and works to get, work together. So this is just one of the examples how this can be done. You can also share, for example, uh, 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 interactive notebooks. Uh, you can share pre -preces. I will talk about this uh, uh, a bit later. But basically, the idea is that throughout the research process, you have the means and you have possibilities to open up uh, your research and for young researchers it's very important to understand that this is the future of research and that uh, once they they become somebody boss somebody's bosses and research managers this will be probably uh, a, a normal a normal everyday practice uh, so uh, how can you do this? I will mention just a few things this is not an exhaustive uh, list of recommendations first of all, an easy thing that you can do is to register an ORCID. So it's an open identifier, it's interoperable, you can uh, add your the, the, your publications and the DOIs of your publications are there, so it's possible to, to track them. Uh, you can, uh, it's also integrated in various platforms. Uh, you register, uh, uh, you uh, put you fill your profile with important information, fill your profile with uh, your publications, you don't have to type them in, you will you will be able to import them from uh, multiple resources uh, and then uh, you just add your the, your ORCID, whenever you publish, uh, well, submit a, a, a manuscript or journal, add your ORCID, uh, insist on it so it's not forgotten, uh, for example, if co-authors sometimes uh, don't add all the uh, ORCIDs, then when submitting uh, anything to repositories, there is an, usually an option to add it. For example, in Zen uh, Zenodo, you can add your ORCID. So 
edit everywhere on your page uh, institutional page on your social media for example on ResearchGate if you're using it etc so this is a very useful a very beneficial little step that you can make alone without asking anyone for, for permission another thing is also using persistent identifiers so these are identifiers for uh, usually uh, articles uh, books book chapters books etc research outputs data anything practically you can even have can have a piece of equipment that has a, a persistent identifier like DOI but there are many others so these are very important they are also interoperable interoperable and they work for you because they are machine readable and you just add them as a link so that uh, humans and machines can read them and they will be just disseminated throughout the system so it's very important to use them for example one simple recommendation is to insist on using uh, the styles uh, citation styles that include uh, a DOI so it's it's much easier for uh, and it's much uh, easier for machines to process this data and to actually identify citations so many citations are missed uh, because uh, the, the, the DOIs are missing, there are some errors, etc. But if you provide a DOI, those citations won't be missed when processed by those uh, uh, commercial uh, citation uh, databases and also uh, open ones like, for example, OpenAlex. Uh, another thing that you can do, and it's very easy to do it, is to use open licenses. So Creative Commons licenses are probably the most common, but for example, for software, different types of licenses are used. And they are usually inbuilt in platforms, so basically you choose from a drop-down list. So if you're choosing, choose as open as possible license. Sometimes you can't choose an open license, but if you can, just choose CC BY. And then also pay attention when publishing with journals, which licenses they are using. Also in repository, when you're uh, submitting something uh, to, to a repository, uh, something that is, for example, not a publication, choose uh, add a license. Uh, this increases the uptake uh, of, of the, the, the resources you're providing, of your outputs, it increases the visibility of them. It uh, encourages reuse because users can know, they don't have to ask you, they know how to use. and Basically, use CC licenses even when you're sharing. You will see my presentation and Obrats, they have CC licenses because we want you to reuse those public uh, do those presentations. So you can also do this with your posters, with everything. Those licenses require citations, so this is a way uh, for you to be credited for your work. Also use repositories. If you have an institutional repositories, of course, you will self-archive publications. You will de do what's ma mandated, but you can also deposit various uh, kinds of stuff. For example, I added here a poster. So this poster will be published as a journal article. It's already published as a conference abstract, but it's very nice to have it as a poster. And then in the repository, you can link it with other outputs and you can make it more visible. And you can also make it more useful for somebody uh, else. For example, for other young career researchers who don't know how to make a poster and it's a good idea and it also uh, contributes to, to a bet, better dissemination of your work. So you can use either institutional repository but you can also use generalist repositories that are open to everyone like, like Zenodo. Uh, also it's very important if you're publishing, uh, if you're uh, depositing in, re in a repository to provide those links, references. For example, this poster is published as a research paper. It's published also as, uh, in a conference abstract. It, there, there is a data set connected to it, so you can link all these pieces of information in a repository, and incre it increases the visibility of everything, and it also uh, provides this, you know, air of uh, reliability to to your research because when people can check all these things it's it looks much much better and it's it provides more information and uh, it's more reproducible also you can use free and open tools and infrastructures and most of the time you will be able to use those uh, without asking anyone whether you should or not but if you're working in a team and the team doesn't want to use this might be an issue so i'm here providing some links where you can find alternatives for commercial tools and uh, please mind that using those open uh, source tools improves their uh, their sustainability because they depend on the, the size of the research 
research community. And also you will you have the European infrastructures. Uh, uh, these are clickable. So when you get a presentation, please explore them. And also you will find some training materials here. But there are many, many opportunities for your work. So, many, uh, for example, in Zenoda and also in other, uh, Argos Obrad will mention it, there are some free tools that you can use as a researcher uh, to practice uh, to practice open science and to uh, make the best use of your results. Also, formats suitable for preservation. Uh, it's very important. This is a list of such recommended format, but this could be tricky if you're working with a team and some team members prefer to use uh, 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 old-fashioned formats that are not open. This could be an issue. And for example, here I'm including an example of uh, Excel uh, that destroyed the data, the original data, in a way that uh, and it's a known problem and people are still using it. So, for example, some open source tools don't have this problem, like uh, LibreOffice. If you use LibreOffice, you won't have this problem. Also, you can publish in open access journals. You are doing this, but think about Diamond Open Access Journal journals because they are not charging uh, they're not charging fees to authors and uh, here I, I'm just I will briefly mention that you have some links here uh, to, to explore for yourself and to uh, to th those uh, tools will help you choose a, a proper journal so but also if you if you don't have a good gold open access option there is always this green route you can always deposit uh, your self archive your manuscript in a repository so don't just pay if you don't have to uh, to pay uh, also, share your data. Uh, Obrad will talk more about this. this. This looks easy. It should be easy, but it depends a lot on, on the team or on the institution because some institutions are closed. So perhaps you, you might wish to share the data, but you may not be in a position to do this because somebody else has to make this decision. Uh, or the same applies to preprints. So you're familiar with the, this concept when you uh, uh you can before uh, before or without uh, submitting uh, uh, your work uh, paper to uh, a journal you can uh, submit it to a preprint repository and it will be in open access it will be immediately available and you can uh, get feedback and it can be peer reviewed only later uh so it's a good way publishing preprints it's a very good way of uh uh, establishing the priority of your research. So if you've published, it has a DOI, it's findable, anybody can check, and you actually protect your results uh, rather than waiting uh, to, to publish them in a journal article. However, this may be easy if you're uh, the only author, but if you're working as a part of a team, then you will have to have the full agreement within the team in order to do this. So this might be... Uh, in the ecosystem, this might be more difficult than it looks uh, at the first glance. Pre-registration is another thing. It's not typical of all research disciplines. Pre-registration involves uh, publishing a research plan early on uh, before you start uh, your actual research in a specific, specified, um, uh, specialized repo uh, repository, actually platform. And it, this is a way to protect your work. But the good thing is that you, uh, if you get negative results throughout your further research, the, the results will be con still considered uh, relevant. And there are journals that accept, many journals that accept uh, research that has been pre-registered. This is not typical of all disciplines, but this uh, largely depends on the team and the institutions and the approach of, of your institution to, to, this, uh, to this kind of practice. Uh, you can do much more. So you can, for example, support open access journals uh, as an editorial board member or reviewer. And this is highly recommended if you have some institutional journals published by your institution because they are struggling, and especially Diamond open access journals. So you can contribute to their work and thereby you contribute also to the, to the, the ecosystem. You can share your software code. I didn't uh, explain this in greater detail because this is not typical of all disciplines. You can also engage in more multidisciplinary research, but you can also engage with general public, either through research dissemination or even through citizen science activities. And you can also create and share open educational resources. These don't have to be really ambitious. You can share your presentations, your posters uh, in a repository, and that's already a great uh, contribution.
So that's all from me. I, I hope I didn't go over time and I'm uh, I'm very I would be very happy to answer some questions.